Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that brings you the Ahkam to do with Ramadan this season. And I hope you're having a very, very special, pious, full of taqwa and full of tawfiq Ramadan, insha'Allah. My name is Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How's your fast going, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. MashaAllah. Audhu billah, as-sami'a al-alim, min ash-shaytan al-rajim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد One of the invalidators of fasting and psalm is the use of enema injection Now this type of injection is actually the fluid um, injected into the lower bowel by the way of rectum and it reaches the stomach in somehow uh, for those who have shortage of vitamins or iron and so forth. Now this type of injection uh, will invalidate the psalm and, and fasting. Other types of injection, let's say via the veins for example, via the arm, uh, or which are used for anesthetic purposes, um, that type won't invalidate the, the, uh, the, uh, the fast. So this is the, the main type of injection in which will invalidate and makes the psalm batil. Um, even if the one needed that treatment, because this is a, a medical treatment. So even if the one needs such injection, that's fine, they can do it. But the, fast, the fasting will be batil and they have to redo the qada of that day in which they took this injection. But as I've said, the other injections by the arm, for example, um, let's say the nutritional injections. Um, well, well, diabetics. Diabetics insulin. and so forth. They are, they're all okay. fine. They're all fine, yeah. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Sheikhna, um, the next inhibitor is, um, or invalidator is um, vomiting, isn't it? Now, does it matter whether it's deliberate or it's not deliberate? Well, the next one is vomiting, as we mentioned. Now, again, um, the one who vomits um, by purpose and either to be for medical reason, for an Ill illness, for example, or just to you know, bring out something from his throat, for example, for any purpose, because it's deliberate and by purpose, the fasting will be void and invalidated. Uh, otherwise, if, if this vomiting took place unwillingly, unintentionally, then again, the rule is that uh, the fast will be valid and sahih. He doesn't have to uh, do the qada of that day, only if it's done deliberately and, and by purpose. So be it uh, a medical uh, treatment, let's say, for some reason, um, or let's say um, he just did it for, for, for no reason, for example, just you know, puts his finger inside his throat and he vomits. Uh, anything deliberate vomiting would cause uh, the psalm and the fast to be invalidated. Sheikh, what happens, I mean, this I've told my family members where they've eaten something and it's not settling well in the stomach uh, and they make themselves sick on purpose to get that out of the stomach because it's creating problems, it's creating heat or it's not digesting properly or they just, maybe they've overeaten and it's just too much, they need to get rid of it. And then they, they, on purpose, they make themselves throw up to, to remove uh, this sort of food and effect from their stomach. Does that make the fasting battle? As I've mentioned, um, if someone deliberately does that, whatever is the reason, uh, something is stuck in the throat or feeling ill and so forth, that will make the fast uh, void and invalid. And they have to do the qada of that day again. So they have to take so qada. So if, if from the iftar before the suhoor in the morning, one gets food, food poisoning, God forbid. I hope you're all eating safe and cooking properly. But let's say they get food poisoning. Um, they've, they've kept the fast. But, you know, they're not feeling well. 
Maybe they've got diarrhea, they're losing water. Maybe they're throwing up, unintentionally throwing up. In that situation, should the person complete the fast or, sh or should the person say, okay, you know what, it's a long fast, it's hot, you're dehydrated, you're throwing up, you're not well, you need to break your fast. What, what, what should one do in that situation? Should he try and complete his fast and go see a doctor or should he say, you know what, I'm not feeling well, I need to stop my fast here, now, here and now? Well, they have to see their situation. If they can remain fasting without any issue, any illness issue, they can overcome the illness, for example. You know, sometimes some people, they can handle it and keep uh, uh, fasting all the day without any severe issue. They might feel a bit of pain here and there, but they can remain fasting all, all the day. But some, they can't ha handle it and they can, f they can actually feel uh, um, the pain in their stomach, for example. They feel they want to vomit, for example. In this case, if they really feel uh, they are ill and they need to actually drink something or, or, or I don't know, use a medicine, for example, to treat that illness, then they become real. The hukum of, 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 of an ill person. So they can break their fast and then um, treat themselves and then they can do the qada afterwards and pay one mod, as I've mentioned, one mod of 750 grams of wheat or barley or, or bread of that raisins. wheat or barley for uh, the poor person. And, and that's it. Uh, so, so that's the kafara. That's a fidya as it's called. Fidya, fidya so for that day that they couldn't fast. What are the kafara? I mean, wh when does it apply and what are they to pay on the fast? Well, the kafara, um, there are certain things that you have to pay kafara and do the qada. So okay. qada wa kafara, both. Um, and that's not fidya, by the way. Fidya is different. Mm -hmm. Fidya is for the one who has an excuse, that's Ill right. illness, that's right. it's, it's a substitute. being pregnant, yeah. breastfeeding for the baby, and so forth. But the kafara here is for the one who deliberately does these things. It's a penalty. Exactly, like a penalty. So the other one is an alternative. Exactly. The fidya is an alternative. Exactly. And the kafara is a penalty. penalty. That you exactly. So for the one, number one, let's begin. Uh, the first one is eating and drinking deliberately and by purpose in the daytime of the month of Ramadan. So okay. you know that you have to you know, remain fasting all day, but it's too hot. You want to drink a cup of cold water, for example, or you're hungry, you want to eat something. So breaking that fast in the daytime of, of month of Ramadan will make uh, the fasting void and batil, and also you have to pay kafara. So that's the, the first type of of, uh, of the rules in which you have to pay kafara and do the qada as well. Number two is um, the marital relation between the hus husband and the wife, uh, the intercourse. If that took place, that, that physical contact, inter contact oh. interaction took place, and they both become junub. Okay. In this case, and and that was in the time of the daytime of Ramadan. Yeah, and we also discussed it's not that even the act has to be completed. Exactly. Even just the initiation and the insertion. Exactly. That is more than enough to make the, uh, the fast battle. Battle, yes. And, and you have to pay. So they have to uh, uh, pay kafara each separately, mm -hmm. the, the husband separately and the wife separately. And they also have to do the qada of that day. So that's the second type. The third type is when the iftar or breaking the uh, breaking the uh, the fast with haram eat oh, or drink okay. so let's say somebody who breaks his fast with na'udhu billah with alcohol or a pork meat na'udhu billah so in this case they have to uh, pay kafara as well as uh, do the qada of that day okay. so that's the third type that's if they if they open their fast with something haram, as in it's now Maghrib Exactly. Time. So for example, for the one who breaks his fast with haram in the daytime of, of the month of Ramadan. During the daytime? Exactly. Okay. Uh, such as um, adultery, the zina, God forbid, or drinking alcohol, wine, mm. and uh, masturbation, yes. and such like. These are haram way of breaking your fast. You know, we mentioned the intercourse between the husband and the wife. That's the halal uh, relationship, marital relationship. But 
Uh, and that also has its own kafar if it's done during the daytime of the, of the month yes. Ramadan. But if, it, if it's done in the haram way, then that also has the kafara and the um, kafara and also uh, the fasting of the qada. Of the qada. And the fourth one is when ascribing lies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet and his pure family, alayhi yeah. salam. Again, uh, this is according to the Sayyid as well, Ihtiyat Wujubi, that you must pay uh, kafara, also the qada of that day. So these are the main aspects of where you have to pay kafara and the qada together. So, Shaykhna, you were saying uh, they have to pay the kafara, uh, which is, you know, one mud and also the fasting. Is that one day, 60 days, 30 days, the kafara? With regard to the kafara, now, uh, for, for the one who does not fast on that particular day, if somebody deliberately and by purpose breaks his fast in the daytime of the month of Ramadan, he must, he's obliged to uh, give the kafara. Um, there are three stages of the kafara. Number one, either to free a slave. Now, in our time, we don't have any more slaves. And you can see how Islam encourages. Uh, to free the humanity from sl slavery. And that's what Ahlul Islam they did mm -hmm. in their time. They bought the slaves and they freed them. They bought them, educated them, they become pious people, and they freed them. So Islam encourages for the, free, the freedom of the humanity from all types of shackles and chains of this life. So if there are no slaves, as we have in this time, in this time, day and age, then we move to the next option uh, of kafara, which is fasting two continuous months. So two months. And how you do it is that you fast 31 days continuously with no gaps. And then after the 31th day when you fast, then you have the option of uh, leaving gaps between each day. So let's say after the 31 days you fast it continuously, the, the, you, can, you can, for example, begin your 32nd day whenever you want. So after a week, after five days, and, then, and you can have gaps as well. Okay, so, so you could do 32nd and then have a two-day break. Th exactly. 33rd, one-day exactly. break, 34th. It's up to you. You it's can up to break you. it up. The main thing, it want. has to be 31 days continuous. 31 days consecutive. Has consecutive, to be exactly. exactly. Oh, wow. Must be. That's longer than Ramadan. Exactly. Ramadan is 29, 30 days and 31 days. Exactly. Subhanallah. That's a kafara. That's why it's called kafara. And uh, that's the first option. If you're unable to fast such a long days and um, you have some kind of illness, let's say, or anything else, yeah, any, for any, any purpose, you can uh, move to the third option of kafara. And that is to feed 60 poor people. Mm -hmm. To feed to give actually food to 60 people. How much food? Are we looking at a, a day's worth or one meal or no, again, a small as a, meal, big as a, meal? As, as it was mentioned, to give one mod of meal mod. to each. 750 grams, you said. Exactly. Wheat. Less than a kilo. You give them wheat, flour, barley, flour, barley, or, or, or the bread, dates, dates raisins. Ahsan Sheikh, thank you. Um, in, the, you know, in the opinion of Sayyid Sadiq Sharazi, may Allah prolong his life, what what is the ruling if someone can't free a slave, if someone can't afford to give uh, 60 people food? What if someone cannot uh, fast for 31 days consecutively and then another 29 days uh, in their own free will? So they can't fast, they can't give the poor rates and they can't um, free a slave. So they can't do any of the kafara. What, what should that person do? Well, the Sayyid gives three options here for such people who are unable to fast or to give uh, food to the poor. He said that they can fast 18 consecutive days instead of two months, then that's fine. But if they can't, they are ill, diabetic, and so forth. Whatever is their situation, severe illness, for example, they can actually feed whatever number of poor they can. Less than 60, let's say. It doesn't matter. 50, 40, whatever they can. As much as they can, they can afford to pay. That's fine. If not, if they were masakin, you know, they had absolutely no money 
to even feed their family, such a poor family or individuals, in this case, they can just say astaghfirullah once, seeking Allah's repentance and forgiveness. That should do the, uh, instead of the, of the kafara, and Allah will inshallah accept inshallah. their deed and forgive them. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Shaykh Khan. Shall we do, we do du'a for all the viewers that, inshallah, they never have to pay any kafara. Inshallah. inshallah that inshallah. Ramadan is, is a time where they can focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill their duties, inshallah. inshallah and there's no need for any kafara or qadha, inshallah. Thank you for joining us once again on Ahkam SOS. Inshallah, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.